Welcome to another episode of Sisters in Christ. My name is Marina, and we have with us today Lillian, Mary, and Monica. Today, our topic is going to be one that's actually very near to my heart. We're going to be talking about our body, self-image, and how we view ourselves. Before we start, I wanted to share a couple of statistics just to remind everyone that we're not alone in this struggle. It said that about 50% of 13-year-old girls reported being unhappy with their body. This number grew nearly to 80% by the time these girls were 17 years old. Nearly 70% of adult women report withdrawing from activities due to their body image. So they literally don't do activities because their body holds them back. 60% of women thought they were too heavy and were self-conscious about their weight. 30% reported being too uncomfortable to wear a swimsuit, and 20% thought that they were unattractive. Knowing these statistics and knowing how we think about ourselves, and we'll kind of dive deeper into how we view ourselves, but how do you think Christ views us? Well, those are some crazy statistics, but you know they're not uh, so far-fetched because I do think the majority of women really struggle with this. But if we took our time and uh, went back to the Bible and saw how Christ sees us, I think it would really shift our mindset around this. Uh, just look at the beginning in Genesis when God created all of creation and he said everything was good and he created the heavens, the earth, the stars, the moon, everything. He said it was good. It was very good. Uh, and he came at one point after he created Adam, and he said, hold on, wait, something's not good here. Uh, and it was that it's not good for man to be alone. And that's where Eve came into the picture, and he created Eve uh, after he puts Adam to sleep. And I like to look at her as she was like this crown of creation. And God was very intentional with how he created her, with how uh, her figure was, how we look. And I think throughout time and the world took that and morphed it into something uh, that could be negative, where in reality it was supposed to be this beautiful uh, image that's you know positive from God's handiwork himself. That's really beautiful. Actually, I never looked at it in that way. That I like what you said about how Eve was the crown of creation. That's really nice. And if you read uh, Song of Solomon, there you have this beautiful imagery that really I think every female, when she reads it can fit into this little story and we read in chapter 4 verse 7 you're altogether beautiful my love there's no flaw in you and I think that if we like you said keep in mind how Christ intended us to be and that he sees us as beautiful then at the end of the day we should accept ourselves and also see ourselves as beautiful I love that it says like there's no flaw in you meanwhile when we look into the mirror we can pick out a million flaws about ourselves, right? And I think it's just that mental struggle of talking well and talking positively to ourselves and just kind of, like Lillian said, bringing it back to the beginning of what Christ thought uh, we looked like and how he created us to look like. I always imagine like God knitting us. And yes, we all have our weaknesses, but I feel like even our weaknesses can be platforms where for God's glory almost and if we start embracing our weaknesses and not just looking at it as it as flaws we view ourselves in a different image right and it actually says in Ephesians 5 29 which I thought was really interesting it says for no one ever hated his own flesh but nourishes it and cherishes it just as Christ does the church and I was reading this verse and I said no one hates their own flesh, but they cherish it and nourish it. And I feel like cherishing it, I sometimes lack in for sure, because like I said, I can pick out a million qualities in myself, but also nourishing it. Sometimes we don't nourish it with the best food for ourselves. We'll kind of just eat whatever we see in front of us or whatever drunk that um, we see really. Um, so I thought that was like really interesting that it said that no one hates their own flesh, but clearly the statistics show that we do. Um, so I kind of just want to put a scenario out there. So I said, someone bigger than you is looking at you right now, wishing that they had your body. And you are looking at someone smaller than you, wishing that you had their body. And sometimes that person smaller than you is looking at you, wishing they were a little bit bigger and fuller in their body. And honestly, I feel like this could be applied to anything. Put your eyes in there, put your hair in there. Any part of our body can really be compared to anybody else. And what do you think actually pulls women back from being in their ideal shape or being in their ideal body image? 
Well, I think you touched a great point about comparison. If we're so busy looking at everybody around us and what we're supposed to look like or what we want to look like, uh, we take the focus off of ourselves and practicing that verse from Ephesians where we are nourishing ourselves and cherishing our bodies. Uh, and it really could be a lack of confidence that's pulling us back and not allowing us to fulfill you know, the best uh, thing that we could do for our bodies and ourselves. Comparison, I feel, is, is almost the enemy of joy because in comparison, you're, I feel like you, you become too extreme. You're either full of pride because then you start putting yourself, oh, well, I'm better than this person or you know, I'm more successful than this person. Or you fall into the category where you feel you're, you're low, you're unworthy, you're less than this person. So it's almost like two different ends of the spectrum. How do we accept things that we can't change? For example, something that I struggle with growing up is, and I still struggle with, is my hair is very thin. And I have, I have bald spots. <laughs> so, me too, girl. Don't even. <laughs> it's something that bothers me. And <laughs> constantly I'm hearing, oh, your hair is thin. Have you tried this? Have you heard that? I have p patients that walk into my, to the room and they're like, you know, your hair is thin. You can try this and this. But I, I can't change my hair no matter what I've tried. So how do we accept those kinds of things that we can't change? So mm. I think there's no <laughs> harm in trying things first. So like... I'm sure they'll give you a lot of recommendations. So I think like we can do our part of trying things, but also realizing that our hair is beautiful or this part of us is amazing about us, right? Like how Mary said, like God knitted us in our, in our parents' wombs or our mother's womb, right? Um, as much as we'd like to be perfect in every single aspect of our lives, I think we just need to really look at ourselves and understand that sometimes that's, Actually, most of the time, you're not going to be perfect in every aspect of your life. And some things you will just have to accept because you'll compensate for in other areas that not necessarily are as important, I guess. I mean, I totally agree. Sometimes it is hard. But I think when you reflect and you feel like I'm more than just my height and weight, I'm more than just, you know, my hair, my eye color, my career, I'm more than all that. And we start finding our value from the word of God rather than in the word of man. And we start, like, I feel so many times we look horizontally for how, what do you think of me? Am I pretty enough? Am I skinny enough? Am I smart enough? Rather than looking upward to our creator, to like what, who he thinks we are. And as we mentioned earlier, this is what. Right, I feel like we seek validation from everybody else, right? And it's, we're always told like, Think of how God sees you and remember that God thinks you're beautiful and you're his princess and all of this. And all of that is very true, but sometimes it is a mental struggle between ourselves of um, what do I look like? Am I happy with what I look like? Can I change what I'm unhappy about? And like, what do you think um, holds us really back from that, from being in our best version? Or what can we change to be in that best version? Mm. Question. I mean, I think social media plays a big factor that we look and we idolize, um, you know, the editing that's done on magazines and the editing that's done on Hollywood and TV. And, you know, we look at these perfectly shaped people with this flawless skin that don't have pimples, that don't have anything. And we kind of compare and we say, wow, like this is. You know, we idolize that, not knowing that there were filters put in. There was all this Photoshop. beautifying <laughs> done to it that, you know, that does stop us from just accepting, like, who we are and realizing, like, you know, we look at that as perfection. So we try to aim for that, knowing that's not even, you know, that's not like a raw it's thing. not real. Right. But I think media is even starting to realize that because I feel like when we were younger and all the models were like size zero, everyone was so thin. And now you look at commercials and it's all about loving your body and there's curvy lines and they're accepting that there are different sizes and different shapes of different bodies. And I think that's actually a good thing that media has done. It showed us that there are different shapes and different sizes and they're still considered beautiful and they're still making clothes that can fit all body types, you know 
even though sometimes you don't want to go into the like curvy plus like category while you're shopping, but they do exist and it is becoming more aware. Yeah, there's definitely a shift in the media, which is yeah. nice. Um, and I think that's helpful because that's, like you said, that's one positive thing that the media has done. Um, because like Mary said, when we compare ourselves to others, we look at all these perfect models. Now, when you're scrolling through Instagram, you see all these imperfect models and it's like they are perfect but it's a matter of shifting our mindset now and i do want to continue that point but we'll be right back after a quick break welcome back uh we were talking a lot about what the media says our bodies look like and i kind of have a question for you ladies how do we how can we be the best version of ourselves like what do we strive for and what can we do to get to that goal of ours? Mm. That's a good question. I think we should focus more on how we're feeling rather than what we look like on the outside. So exercising, eating well, uh, there's a big difference between you know dieting and trying to fit into a certain size and having that be my whole mentality rather than shifting my mentality and saying you know I want to take care of my body, the body that God gave me, you know the body that's a temple of the Holy Spirit, and I want to make it you know as strong as possible, as fit as possible, as uh, great as possible to glorify God in everything that I do. So we should be focusing on what can we have our bodies do rather than what can we have our bodies look like? Mm -hmm. I agree. I feel like our bodies have so much potential. And when you think about it, like we live in these bodies for 60 years, God willing, right? Or 70 years, God willing. And honestly, when I see how I am now in my 20s and I'm panting going up the stairs, like what am I going to look like when I'm in my 40s? I'm barely going to be able to get up the stairs and like, that's not what I feel God intended our bodies to be used for. Like we're supposed to be active. We're supposed to be serving. We're supposed to be able to do all these things. And I feel like I'm not living up to that potential that my body was created for. And I feel like when we, when we feel like we look good, we, it also reflects on how we think. So it's almost like your mind, body, like mind over matter mm -hmm. type thing. So you feel good. You're able to, to be the best version of yourself when you feel good about yourself. Right. Yeah. I, I agree with all of that. Um, and I think that maybe like practically speaking, setting time aside for yourself every day and, you know, taking care of yourself and um, making sure that like, like everything, if you, if you have that inner confidence, it'll show outwardly and then you'll, it, things will be so smooth. And I think that um, just little changes here and there and setting time for yourself really and like making a part of your schedule for each day yeah i'm really actually helpful. happy you said that monica because i feel like we dedicate so much of our time to everything else like we're in work for eight hours we'll do our service we'll hang out with our family we'll clean our houses but we don't like set time aside for ourselves and i feel like I don't know, when it comes to me, I'm always like, oh, well, an hour is too long. Like, I don't have enough time for an hour at the gym, right? Like, I short myself at the end of the day. And what I've started realizing is that if you dedicate that one hour, like, I feel like I'm more productive when I actually get it done because I feel like I am feeling better. I am putting my body and, like, my mind over my body. And it just, it makes me happy that I'm able to put myself first. Like, when I don't go and exercise, I feel like, wow, I just like really shorted myself today. Like I didn't do the best that I could for myself. And I think that's really important because we do so much for everybody else. But when it comes to ourselves, we kind of like short it. Oh, 100%. Yeah, the, the few days that I do exercise, I'm like, oh, this feels great. <laughs> yeah. I should do this more often. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I have a question for you guys. What about our viewers who are uh, watching? And, you know, they feel pretty confident in their own skin. They feel really good. They might, you know, be on the thinner side, but they're not... Uh, putting in all that effort that we're talking about in eating well and exercising, should they stop right there uh, because they already feel good or should they challenge themselves to go a little further? I think it all depends. Like it's nice to know like what mirror you're looking into. And sometimes I feel like if I look in the mirror, you know, maybe today I wake up and I say, hey, I want to put on, you know, a little bit of modesty. I want to put on a little bit of chastity. I want to put on a little bit of humility, a little bit of commitment. And that's um, physical is great in their goals to have physical goals, but definitely to challenge yourself 
with these great virtues of a godly woman is also like a step higher. I love that you add that. I feel like definitely you should never stop and like never get too comfortable in the skin you're in. Like you should always be challenging yourself, always be pushing yourself. And it could be you're thin and you're healthy, but you might not have good stamina. So like maybe walking or like maybe just doing some cardio will help increase your stamina. I feel like if we stop where we're at, there's always like a phrase, right? Like if you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards. Like you're not staying, we're never staying at where we're at. So I think regardless of what body image you're in or how you feel, I feel like we should always be striving to be the best version of ourselves. They say if you aim for nothing, you'll hit it all the time, right? <laughs> That's actually <really> true. <laughs> Um, but thank you ladies I think this we had really great discussions sit in just to recap I think we should think positively about ourselves we should really pick our goals and strive towards them we should always remember that Christ views us as flawless views us as beautiful and I think if we keep that in the back of our minds and we really use that to push ourselves forward we'll be in the best shape life mindset um, that we could be in thank you Thank you.